And let's start first of all with the thing that I'm most excited about is to see Anna's spotlight. But first of all, I'll let you know that Anna is from Overwatch. She is a mid to long range support sniper capable of healing at any range while also maintaining a fair level of damage output. She's 60 years old and she's Egyptian. Just the important stuff. Now let's take a look at her spotlight video. One of the world's best snipers, Anna Amari was a founding member of Overwatch and served for years as its second in command. After being gravely wounded in the line of duty, Anna struggled with the weight of a life on the front line and chose to retreat from the world. But her need to protect the innocent soon proved too strong to ignore. With her rifle back in hand, Anna is ready to use her years of combat experience to safeguard the Nexus and everyone in it. Target eliminated. Anna is a long range support sniper who can shut down the enemy team's healing capabilities. Anna's trait, Shrike, causes her basic attacks to apply a dose of poison to her target that deals additional damage over time. Doses stack for increased damage and are refreshed by each of Anna's basic attacks. In addition to her trait, Anna has a longer attack range than most heroes. Healing Dart is Anna's primary method of supporting her team. She fires a dart in the targeted direction, healing the first allied hero it hits. The dart has a very short cooldown, and it passes through all minions and enemy heroes. Anna's next basic ability is Biotic Grenade. When thrown, the grenade heals allied heroes in its blast radius and boosts all incoming healing on them for a short period. Enemy heroes hit by the grenade take damage and are temporarily blocked from being healed. Sleep Dart provides Anna with a way to CC her enemies. She fires a dart in a straight line that hits the first enemy hero in its path and briefly puts them to sleep. Any damage a hero suffers while asleep wakes them immediately. Anna's first heroic ability, Nano Boost, enhances the power of her teammates. Anna restores a large amount of mana to the targeted hero, greatly increases their spell power, and reduces the cooldown of all their abilities. Anna cannot use Nano Boost on herself. More of a solo operative, Eye of Horus offers Anna a heroic option she can use while alone. When activated, Anna briefly sets up a sniping position at her current location. Once set, she can fire several specialized shots with global range. The first hero hit by each round is either healed if they're an ally or is dealt damage if they're an enemy. Shh. Lights out. Landing skill shots is key to playing Anna effectively. Her healing dart hits the first allied hero in its path, so make sure you always have a clear line of fire to each of your teammates. A well-placed biotic grenade can not only boost your team's healing, but it can also negate healing for the enemy team and secure a takedown. Shields are unaffected by biotic grenade, allowing heroes such as Tassadar and Zarya to protect their teammates even if they were caught in the blast radius. When playing against Anna, dive at her to force her out of position and eliminate her. Keep in mind that Anna can't heal herself with healing dart, so landing poke damage on her can make it risky for her to stay in the fight. Anna has three questing talents to choose from at level one. Grenade calibration increases the healing radius and buff duration of biotic grenade. Piercing darts allows sleep dart and healing dart to pierce targets and travel farther and Detachable Box Magazine grants additional charges on Healing Dart as you stack doses on enemy heroes. At level 13, Anna has two talents to choose from that clear CC. Purifying Darts causes Healing Dart to remove roots and slows, while Smelling Salts causes it to remove stuns and grant armor. With elite skills sharpened by years of experience, Anna can hit any target in her sights. Line up your shots, and show the rookies how it's done. 
Make sure to leave us a comment or subscribe to Heroes of the Storm on YouTube and around the web, and we'll see you in the Nexus. My shots find their mark. So that seems pretty original. I think that's pretty original. Uh, a pretty much a fully skill shot based support with a two second cooldown on a healing dart and a hundred percent unamplified healing. Uh, the opposite of amplified healing. Pretty cool. We can learn more about her by going over her talents, which we can do right before we start to play her in a little bit. But for now, let's take a look at the PTR patch notes for September 18th. These are the PTR patch notes that are live today on the PTR. Whereas in a day or two, there's a different set of patch notes that will be live on live server. Hope you're still with me. So Anna is going to be coming to the Nexus. And there's going to be a new special event as well. Let's start with that. Pachimari Mania. Open loot boxes and be the first team to find a golden Pachimari. At the beginning of a match, loot boxes will spawn around your starting area. Open as many as you can and try to find the legendary golden Pachimari. At this time, can we do a check quickly in chat to see if anyone has the golden Kappa as well? So far, it doesn't look like it, but the search goes on. Thank you for uh, thank you for checking. So, okay. The player to open the most loot boxes on each team will be announced when the event ends. So be sure to always try your best. The first team to find it will win the event and earn credit toward their Pachi Mari Mania quest progress. It's a four part chest queen. Uh, chest queen. Quest chain. All quests must be completed in order and only one quest will be active at a time. If you find two, you get emojis. Find five, you get a banner. Find eight, you get a spray. And find ten, you will get a portrait. However, because this is PTR, it will not yet be permanent. And you'll have to wait till the live version of the game, which is going to be Tuesday the 26th or Wednesday the 27th for Europe. Then, new hero Anna, a founding member of Overwatch and one of the world's best snipers. Get wrecked, Nova! Anna Amari uses her skills to protect the innocent. Though she went missing in action after losing her eye, Anna's sense of duty and responsibility has brought her back to the fight. Her trait is poison like we saw in the video just now. Instantly boost an allied hero, restoring 200 mana. For the next 8 seconds, they gain 30% spell power and their abilities recharge 150% faster. So that's 2.5 times as fast as usual. We don't know the cooldown from this yet, but maybe we will be able to know once we take a look at her specific set. 8 specialized rounds is her second heroic with unlimited range. Rounds hit the first allied or enemy hero or enemy structure in their path. Allies would be healed and enemies would be damaged. Structures take half damage. She's unable to move while it's active. Okay, so you activate a new position, sniping position. During that time you can fire up to 8. Or you can switch back to a non-sniping position. And during the time you're unable to move. So it reminds a little bit, but it's not quite the same as either Sergeant Hammer or Li Ming with Pure Power Archon. Yeah, it looks like she can also snipe the core. <laughs> There's also going to be a new battleground, Volskaya Foundry. There is a video about this as well, and I think at this point it would be nice to show that one. As the spotlight video came out before I was streaming uh, HOTS. So let's go take a look at it.
Commence combat operations. Is this the highest resolution? Sorry. Protector online. Technology needs more work. Deathwing Diva the Destroyer. Uh, we sell Junkrat uh, also. Uh, Junkrat is not in this PTR yet, but he should be soon. Uh, probably just a tip off to the next hero to be released. As per usual, we would expect in about three to four weeks from now. Uh, for now, let's take a look at Volskaya Foundry in a four and a half minute overview, which is like a spotlight. After discovering her factory and the surrounding city in danger of being invaded by beings from other worlds, CEO Katja Volskaya immediately began work on a new mech series to defend her homeland from the denizens of the Nexus. Now, the Triglav Protector is ready for testing. Volskaya Foundry is a medium-sized, three-lane battleground. At the top, center, and bottom of the foundry sit three control points. Periodically, a control point will activate, and teams must buy for control of the point to acquire a massive mech vehicle. Ownership of a point can be gained by standing inside the designated area. However, if an enemy happens to also enter the area, the point will become contested until the foe is eliminated. Once a team assumes possession of a point, they will begin to accrue victory progress at a steady rate. Teams must remain in the area to continue this progress as stepping away will eventually return the point to a neutral state. As in Overwatch, if a control point reaches 99% and an enemy remains to contest, the point will enter an overtime state. This overtime state will only last a few seconds, but it is reset whenever an enemy player steps onto the point. And I wonder if just like in Overwatch, I have no idea how it freaking works while I'm playing it. I mean, at least as someone who hasn't played a lot of Overwatch, I'm always like, why hasn't the game ended yet? Overtime to me was a confusing mechanic that uh, I hope will be fairly transparent to myself and my my worthy, courageous teammates in, uh, in Hero League and Quick Match, but we'll see. Once a team's victory progress finally hits 100%, they will close out the objective and initiate deployment of a Triglav Protector. The Protector is similar to other piloted objectives in Heroes of the Storm, like the Dragon Knight or Garden Terror, but it is unique as a two-person vehicle. The first person to enter the Protector will assume its pilot position. This player will control the mech's movement and use of sieging and support abilities. Charge will propel the Protector toward a targeted enemy's position, dealing area damage around it and double damage to structures and minions. Rock this objective feels freaking cool so far. Rocket Fist launches a concussive fist that will root the first hero it hits or disable a targeted structure for a brief period of time. When activated, Shield Emitter will provide the mech armor and grant a shield to allies in its proximity. The second person to enter the Protector will take on the Gunner position and has access to a deadly set of damage-dealing abilities. After a range-defining wind-up, the Protector's Particle Cannon can launch a projectile to a target location, dealing area damage upon impact. 
The mech can also initiate Gatling Cannon, unleashing an ongoing barrage of missiles at your cursor location for a brief period. Or activate its scorching laser to cut a line in the terrain that will trigger a delayed explosion for heavy damage. In addition to the Protector, spread across Volskaya Foundry are five mercenary camps, two siege camps, two turret mercs, and a singular support camp. Utilize the pushing power and activatable resources from these camps to bolster your team's aggression and push further into enemy territory. The control points across Volskaya are unique in a few ways. Each layout is different and will require you to engage the objective with a variety of tactical strategies. On top of that, the addition of moving conveyor belts around the points brings a dose of chaos that can amplify your team's approach or stifle it completely. Make sure you understand the direction each conveyor belt is moving around your point when you decide to engage or retreat. Even if your back is against the wall and it looks like the enemy is about to capture a point, do not lose hope. If you defensively dive a point before it hits 100%, the enemy cannot secure victory with you present. Safely hold your ground and get your team to back you for a team fight that could turn the tide. You do not want to underestimate the power of the Triglav Protector. In the hands of talented players, this mech can unload a ridiculous amount of damage. Volskaya Foundry is primed to test its remarkable new technology. How are you with mechs? Ready to be a pilot? A gunner? Or just a test dummy? We'll see you in the Nexus. Right, so first impressions uh, as we if first impressions about it besides the fact that it looks pretty cool graphically uh, they showed it the Haka in this video and then I looked at where are the brushes for the Haka to contest the objective at you would expect brushes right around the thing but presumably they felt that there would be too much of a trap setting ability that would make defenders advantage too good it looks like here on the left and here on the right is a little brush, uh, but fairly easy to play around because there isn't a lot of space. There's some vents here, but I'm, I think I'm glad that they're kind of further away, that they are not too close to either the conveyor belt or the objective. So that's uh, one interesting observation. I'm trying not to really, <clears throat> I'm trying not to really have too much judgment, uh, just to kind of see what I observe, right? Uh, secondly, you can either use the objective with one player or with two, which is kind of an interesting mechanic. Then, of course, there is the uh, overtime aspect that I hope will be relatively transparent, and uh, that the map doesn't become too difficult. I really like the animations of the... Uh, what, is, what is this called? The destroyer, whatever. Destroyer of worlds. Conveyor belts is actually an idea I had many many months ago that I thought would be super cool and I'm very happy to see them. It reminds me of old arcade games like uh, Sonic the Hedgehog and uh, some other games. Anyone here ever played Wacky Wheels? I believe it was a kind of copy of Mario Kart but it's the only Mario Kart type of game that I ever played. Wacky Wheels was so good you had those conveyor belts as well and it can be really funny. Also those conveyor belts will have the feeling of being RNG while not actually being RNG. Now here's the thing that I feel about RNG. RNG is really funny and it can lead to a lot of unique game situations that if you just have a neutral battleground wouldn't really be happening. Now you don't truly want it to be too much RNG because or, or any at, at all, because you want skill to be dominant in determining the result of things. The reason it will feel RNG is because a lot of people are going to be walking over those uh, conveyor belts and they're going to make mistakes, like the Zagara who is trying to crawl up the uh, conveyor belt. And they're going to be like, I can't help, right? So there's definitely going to be people that are going to be confused by it, but there's also going to be people, people that shine at using it, that see the movement, and they do the godlike Ring of Frost, and that's gonna be funny. And it is, 
a transparent objective, though it will take time to get used to. It will have all the fun of RNG without actually being it. So I think that's really fun and cool. Uh, it looks like a hot mess contesting these. I'm sure it will be uh, really chaotic in quick match and probably in Hero League as well. My hope is that the map will gain more traction than Hanamura. Also, of course, that it will be better than Hanamura. Because one thing that we were really bereft of that was missing was that Hanamura was not played at Pro Scene. And because of that, there was a disconnect of how you're supposed to play it and how people play it. We learn much from the Pro Scene. And so I hope that this map will quickly gain traction at the Pro Scene where people can learn a little bit from it. Right? And it's just a little bit of a hope there. So, cool. Uh, let's move on to the next segment, which is to uh, continue with the PTR patch notes right here. Voskaya Foundry. Text-wise, feel free to pause the YouTube video if you want to read more about it. But of course, you can find it yourself as well. But we just looked at the video, which is even better, right? This is our second sandbox custom game. The first one is of Cursed Hollow. And here is Volskaya Foundry. Uh, sandbox is like a cheat box where you can quickly level up, try out abilities with your friends and test interactions that previously were difficult to test time efficiently. Very useful to learn the game better with or just to have some fun. So it's nice that they added that as well. Here's the new battleground rotation. Of course, this is PTR, so this will not be relevant for another eight to nine days. But this is going to be the new rotation. Volskaya, Haunted and Towers. They removed Blackheart, yay. They removed Braxis, uh, Sky. So I don't mind Braxis and Sky too much. I would say I have a pretty, like from the games that were a little bit less in quality, I would say Braxis goes in the extreme direction of being less enjoyable. But there's also good games there. Whereas Blackhearts, I never truly feel like I'm having much fun there, so I'm glad that it is removed for now. And Sky Temple, I would say, is pretty average for me. I like Towers of Doom a lot. Haunted Mines, so-so for me, but I'm very okay with them coming back and either way it's a rotation, right? And Volskaya. And these will stay. Moving on. AI heroes will now perform more dynamic strategies. And I do believe we have a video that pertains to Blizzard's Heroes of the Storm AI as well. Under the Hood AI. AI is an important part of HOTS. What makes good AI? An AI that closely matches players' expectations. Be safe, but also engage at the right time. So what they are saying is, just to kind of give you the TLDR, is that every hero since Garrosh has received updated AI programming. And they're now doing a, a passover of heroes that came out before Garrosh to also increase their AI. The new system will make your heroes and your computer run faster while playing HOTS, which will in, uh, result in improved frame rate. And the heroes will become smarter. It may even mean that AI Valera will do something besides staying cloaked. So heroes are hitting more combos and so on. <clears throat> and there is a there's some pretty interesting extra news. I'll just kind of show you the URL for that as well. I'm pasting it in the chat. And if you are uh, if you are on YouTube, feel free to look at it right here. This is the link, you can copy that. For now, moving on with the PTR patch notes. New AI. Many heroes have received tactical AI improvements, including the following. I could have just clicked it here. <laughs> okay, could have just clicked it here. So there we go. 
Voice lines that have been selected for use in players' loadouts have had their volume increased in-game. That's good, because it was pretty hard to hear them. Now have a larger 3D falloff, increased sound exclusivity, and can interrupt other voice lines. Good. Banners that are placed will also include the name of the player who owns the banner. That's a pretty nice change. Nice try! Healing indicators. Increased and decreased healing indicators have been added and will appear next to... So we saw this in the Anna video, right? When Anna throws a biotic grenade, she gives plus 25% amplified healing to allies and minus 100% to enemies, which means they cannot receive healing for a few seconds. You can now see that with a banner, with an indicator. Good. Hero icons on the minimap now indicate which direction that hero is facing. So the way that I think that's going to be displayed is with a circle and then like a little V in a direction like that. Little little V around the circle. That could be really nice. There is a change on vehicles. All vehicles are now unstoppable. Wow. No more stuns. No more hooks. No more garage throw. At least the pull in. No more grenades. You could still blind them though, probably. Players under level 5 can no longer whisper non-friends using cha channel player lists. What I also hope is that players under level 5 can no longer report. However, players under level 5 who receive a whisper from a non-friend can whisper that player back. Good. And you get to level 5 very fast, so this is not really too much of a concern for people. It should now be easier to differentiate between owned and unowned items. Okay. Here are some changes on the PTR. And this doesn't include the ones that are already live. Uh, in a day or two on live server. Time Trap now has a unique minimap icon. Flight will go on a 10 second cooldown when interrupted. Ah! Including self cancelling. Wow! I'm not sure I liked this one. But this one's I like. Because self-cancelling was a, an, a useful tool for Falstaff to be like... And then you cancel because you don't want to go yet. But you want to have the option. So you initially start to channel it to see maybe I will fly to my allies. You fly again, you cancel. And in so doing so you had that option. So you can no longer do that. Painful. Painful for Falstaff. But perhaps they felt it was needed to make it weaker nova sight range increased on her holo decoy from 6 to 12 now matches heroes no more remote delivery which was double vision and they wow now you can have 24 sight range for holo decoy with holo stability Anti-armor shell also reduces the physical armor of your target by 10 for 3 seconds. And the auto attack speed is 2.5. That means that the next time you attack with anti-armor shells, you will do bonus damage with it if you hit on cooldown. And it increases the damage that your allies do to the target with physical. Before, anti-armor was not a competitive choice compared to the snipe master and uh, the, the, her version of follow-through, now maybe it can be a valid option. Five extra range, five percent. Resident Ghost. Amateur, deep tunnel, same thing as Falstad. Same thing as Falstad, okay? Same thing. Breath of Heaven cooldown increased from 8 to 10. Mana cost increased by 5. 
So this is a nerf on a hero that just prematurely without looking at the rest, I don't feel needed a nerf yet. Transcendence, massive healing increase, increasing his support capability with his support trait while probably dealing with the fact that people only ever pick Iron Fists. Insight, even more cooldown reduction. And they buff the QW heal. Makes sense. Because everybody goes Iron Fist Karazim, giving pretty decent and good heals, generally as second support, but sometimes single support, and uh, Transcendence just doesn't match up. So now it will be better. Interesting. But this is a pretty big deal. This is single target healing. This is AoE heal. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. If they only did this and they didn't do this, inside would become OP. And Transcendence still has an early game advantage over inside. So you can probably not say that you should always go inside anyway. Doggy! What's the changes to the doggy? <clears throat> so right now, Rhaegar is like tier S or tier 1. Probably top 2, top 3 support. Some may say the best. He's definitely the most versatile. He has cleanse, burst heal, area of effect heal and a decent finishing ability in teamfight. Cast range reduced from 8 to 6, putting him more at risk. And getting more punished when allies dive deep. His ability to heal an Illidan from afar, especially Hero League Illidans, which do tend to go kind of deep. Bounce range reduced from 8 to 7. That's a pretty big deal as well. Primary healing target reduced. That's huge. Almost 20% reduction. Oh! And what about the 30 area bounce? It's probably 125. Or 167. Positioning for Rager's Chain Hill matters more. Huh. It's a pretty big nerf gun. Does this kill the Rhaegar? He still has cleanse and ancestral. Secondary heal is more, but harder to hit and harder to hit the initial with a lot less heal on the primary target. They have been nerfing. They have been nerfing all the supports and I do have to point out that probably because there's so many new heroes with armor that's why double support meta is a thing. I think there's two major reasons why we have double support meta. Is because healers in general are really good. Good healing output, good utility and good damage as well. This is part of nerfing every support. They already did it to Uther, who's still really good. They tried to do it to Ariel as well, who apparently still sees play as well. They tried to do a rework with Morales, which people weren't sure about. Is it a nerf or a buff? But it actually looks like it is a buff, especially in build versatility. And people are using her more in HCC competitive play than they were before. So it's not really a nerf. Karazim gets nerfed on this most popular build and now Rhaegar gets definitely nerfed. The thing is, nerfing supports is a good thing if you don't want double support meta. And most people say that. If supports were all reduced in strength by 100%, or let's say every support as they are, get half as strong. That doesn't mean we're gonna run quadruple support to make up for the lack of healing. All it means is that people will try to play without support. More warriors, more self heal, more damage. So, there's always this thinking that people say, if supports are a little bit weaker, you need two to get the healing you need. That's just not true. It's not true. 
The weaker supports are, the less you'll double support it. It's all about the balance of strength in a draft, and you'll, you'll work around it. If you don't want double support, you need to make the supports weaker. For me personally, I don't mind double support, to be honest. I don't mind it. So I'm not saying that's needed, but most people are saying that's what they want, at least the vocal people. So uh, this is in line with what seems to be the wishes, but I wonder if it's the existence of armor that makes support more valuable, which is true. Uh, armor definitely makes support more valuable. More effective HP because of with every heal. So we'll see how this uh, changes things. The Haka gets the same cooldown treatment. So I think double support fights that happen over the course of a long fight that result with one team winning are very fun to watch. It means there's a long fight without that immediate burst sensation where you have little to no interactivity or counterplay. Bursting people is what mages are about, and that can be pretty fun for the mage player. And definitely if you're out of position, you should get bursted from 100 to 0 maybe. But I like double support fights that end up with some team winning. One or two minute fights with a victor is what Warcraft 3 is, which is what I was a competitive player in. I think those fights are fun. Longer fights, more fun than shorter fights, my opinion. What I like a little bit less is double support comps where they fight, no one dies, people go back to laning, wave clear laning, wave clear laning, with zero death until minute 20. So I would personally be in favor, I don't mind double support, I would be in favor of having a double support that does force a victory. And I believe that's the responsibility of a strong battleground objective, rather than a weak one. It's weak battleground objectives like Cursed Hollow and Tomb of the Spider Queen that lead to double support comps where there is no victor, just losers of, you know, just a fight happens and, but we'll see how it plays out. Johanna, falling sword, mana cost reduced, damage reduced by a lot, now applies a 50% slow. So they buffed the damage for falling sword before and they increased the cooldown in order to make it feel more impactful. It was during the same time that stage dive got the impactfulness treatment, uh, the, the long cooldown, high damage. They increase Falling Sword damage, stage dive damage, I'm trying to remember the others. So the damage goes down, but the functionality goes up. I think that's okay. This slow will lead to more damage from your allies, which is what a warrior is supposed to be about. Laws of Hope. Health regeneration reduced from 10 to 1.5. Her healing button is, is increased to 30% max health instead of 20% on a shorter cooldown. More authority over your heals, less automatic effect. I'm okay with that. No more regeneration master, so reduced heavily Johanna's healing over time. That's kind of a pity because I do like that regen master, uh, laws of hope interaction of of being a, you know, a walking having a walking fountain of youth with you. No more righteous smash. Once I saw in pro play the use of righteous smash. Once in HGC I casted it. I believe it was JPL on Tomb of the Spider Queen with the Righteous Smash. Gain back up to 60 mana for your Q. Now, never again. Hold your ground uh, is moved from level 13 to 1. This was if someone breaks your shield, you get CDR. Also 20% bigger shield. You get CDR on your trait. And now no longer need to be broken. So bigger shield. Shorter cooldown at level 1. Without nerfing its strength, bringing it forward is... That means it's very strong now. 
Also, Laws of Hope is here now instead of at 4, so you can either have an activatable heal with a bit of regen, or you can have a better unstoppability trait with a higher shield of it and a, can use more often. And the final one was what? Block, reinforce. Three types of survive, survivability at level 1. Conviction is the movement speed from Condemn, now at 4. Shin's Exposed, which uh, was at 7, is now at 4, with more damage, because it was pretty bad. It's when you do your Blinding Glare, follow-up damage draws the charge that you put on it, dealing damage. And Eternal Retaliation, cooldown reduction... Cooldown reduction decreased from three quarter seconds to half a second. So a little bit less mass Ws. The Crusade March is on, it's gone. Instead, Zealous Glare increases the blind duration of Shield Glare by half a second. Your auto attacks against blinded heroes increase their blind duration by one second, up to a maximum of three. Subdue. Hitting 2 causes slow to be increased to 80%, no decay. And a quest, if you ever hit 4, punish now always slows by 80%, no longer decays. And this is very easy. You All you gotta do is condemn once, queue them, and you get the quest. I believe this will be a very easy quest, and it's a one-time thing. And then you have 80%. And 80% slow is amazing. It's nearly a root. This seems to be an extremely powerful talent and probably better than this one, even against Illidan, I think. Roar. This was a damage talent at level 4, is now at 13. It does a little bit less extra damage, but it does increase damage if you hit 2 or more. Burning Rage is gone, which was nice for Wave Clear. So her Wave Clear is weaker there, and her Wave Clear is weaker from this one as well. And Punish activates from hitting heroes to increase damage, so this cannot be used for wave clear either, nor can this be used as well for wave clear. So overall, wave clear is definitely a lot weaker. Blessed Hammer active. Two hammers that spiral. Hitting enemy heroes with shield glare reduces the cooldown of Blessed Hammer. This ability, I assume they mean condemn. No, 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 no. It's no longer tied to Condemn. It's an activatable. Number one, let's say. When you press it, at level 13, two hammers, and hitting Shield Glare reduces the ability of it. But they don't say what the actual cooldown is. But with an 8 second reduction, I would guess it's somewhere between 12 to 20 seconds. There is the cooldown, 30 seconds. Thirty seconds cooldown. And the damage is increased from 41 to 80 and two hammers. So before Blizzard Hammer was pretty... Uh, <laughs> Blizzard Hammer was pretty weak and now it's pretty strong. Deal damage to enemies around you. Holy Fury, W, tied to your W. Each enemy hero hit by Condemn increases the damage by 40% for 5 seconds. Interesting. Deal damage? So it's like Burning Rage, but they don't say how much. This time I did not not read it, right? Holy Fury deals 12 damage. It's like Burning Rage. W increases the damage. Okay. Thank you for telling me, Yal on Twitch. You already tested it. So if you hit 5 heroes, you get a 200% increase. So you do triple Burning Rage if you condemn 5 heroes. If you condemn 1, you do a 1.4 Burning Rage. Is that it?
fanaticism, additional functionality, now also increases. So this is her wave clear talent, but she needs heroes to do it. But I mean, I guess even without it, she has it. So she has a better burning rage actually. So at once again, she can wave clear decently at 13. And when there's heroes, even more so. Fanaticism now also increases the duration of Iron Skin by two seconds. If you remember, this is up to 40% movement speed, which is more than mount speed, while taking damage when her trait is up, when her Iron Skin is up. Uh, Yalon says normally Burning Rage deals 22 to 24 damage, so that would mean it's less than Burning Rage. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to test it. So don't take my word for it or Yalon for that matter. Yeah, and I guess since exposed is some wave clear as well. That's true. That's true. Heaven's Fury. Cooldown reduction increased from 2 to 3 seconds. Indestructible. Duration reduced from 5 to 4. Storm Shield is gone. A new activatable. Blinded by the light. Activate to grant nearby allies a shield equal to a quarter of their max health for three seconds. So this is a little bit higher max health shield than Storm Shield, which is 20%, but this is only three seconds. Hitting enemy heroes with shield clear reduces the cooldown by eight seconds. But guys, it doesn't say what the cooldown is. Oh yeah, 60 seconds, <laughs> lol. How do you feel about vehicles being unstoppable? I think it's very risky in traffic. I, I, I don't want to hate it because I haven't tried it yet. But I think that uh, the fact that vehicles were not unstoppable was fine. To her credit, Johanna has not needed many changes. It's all been fair. But still, we wanted to spruce things up. All right. Loot chest purchased via the loot tab will now only grant rare loot chests rather than normal loot chests. That's good. That's good. I never buy because getting a normal one not really worth it normally. I mean that's uh, that's a good change. I applaud it. You guys applaud it too. I see. Rewards. The Celestial Steed Mount has been removed and replaced by Celestial Rainer. Raptor. Raptor. Celestial Rainer would be a nice mount. That's a mount I could get behind. Uh, okay. The 1000 gem reward for reaching 5 has been removed. The welcome bundle has been removed from the collection. New skins. Well, the new skins. We saw a glimpse of that in the video. Extreme Diva sounds good. Ah, Arthas's horse. Nice. Kind of unceremonious that not saying that it's his horse. The horse that never dies. Invincible. Kappa. Mm. Ah, okay. Oh, it says invisible. Oh, okay. <laughs> Kappa Klaus. A lot of bug fixes. Feel free to pause if you want to read them or go to it yourself. A little bit too much for me to narrate. My voice will not survive it. That was the PTR changes. Admirable ally. 